Hey guys! Okay, so first I just want to put two disclaimers out there. I am sick, so if I'm coughing a lot and my voice sounds crazy, you know why. It's because I'm sick. Um, also, if I'm looking, if it looks like I'm looking a different way from the camera, the monitor is right there and I can see myself. So, I mean, try to look this way, but if I'm looking that way, just, just forgive me. Just, just checking to make sure everything looks alright over here. Um... So basically, what I am here to do is I have picked out, well, okay, so basically I was talking to God and I needed an idea for a video because I was like, I want to get this thing started. And he was like, why don't you answer some questions that are asked by like teens that are like exploring the faith? And so I was like, hmm, good idea. So I Googled questions actually. I didn't come up with these questions. Um, and I actually put a link in the description there from a blogger. He asked like some teens just anonymously like questions that they had about like Christianity and the faith and what it's like to be a Christian. So I picked five questions out of 15. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to like go read more and like see more of the questions that were asked and see what he answered and what he said about them. But um, I'm only going to answer five and I just picked the ones that I think are like some of the most important ones. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to jump into answering them. Feel free to um, comment. Feel free to comment on them. Feel free to disagree with them respectfully. Like I'm always here for like if you disagree let's share ideas let's see how um we can benefit each other by disagreeing but always in a respectful manner um so yeah but i just wanted to say i will leave like time cards and questions in the description bar so if you just want to skip to a specific question that benefits you or just that you're listening to so you could get a specific answer i'll leave the time cards in the description um, so that you can find that answer if you don't want to listen to all of it. Totally understand because I don't like listening to irrelevant stuff that doesn't matter to me either. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to get started. And these questions, I'm going to go a little bit out of order since I did pick them like, you'll, you'll see, you'll see, um, if you go look at the link. But so question number one is, and on the list is actually going to be question number two. But question number one for me is, so the question is, what's wrong with rock, country, CC, and jazz, and jazz music, and how can you tell what music is good and what is bad? So I'm just going to rearrange the question. Um, huh? Okay, so I'm going to rearrange the question. Basically, what's wrong with hip-hop? What's wrong with pop? What's wrong with R&B? What's wrong with, um, did I say pop? I don't know. So basically that genre, um, most of the people that's probably watching this listen to that type of music and it's something that is not for centuries. It hasn't been associated with Christianity. Like you, hip hop, rap, R&B don't go with Christianity. So basically I'm here to say I do not listen to all Christian music. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> um, I do not listen to all Christian music. Basically, okay, so this one is hard. I don't listen to all Christian music and I don't feel like I'm required to listen to all Christian music as a Christian. If you feel like God has called you to only listen to Christian music, then by all means, only listen to Christian music. But I personally have a love for... I'm an old soul. I love like 90s um, R&B and hip hop and stuff like that. And like I just really like that music. So I still listen to that music. As long as it's not... As long as it's not making me feel like I have to go out and do something wrong that's not in the will of God for my life then I don't see what's wrong with me listening to that music. But please be aware, music does give off vibes and energies that if you let them into your mind, sometimes they persuade you to do things that you wouldn't necessarily do if you were a Christian or if you were, if you do have that conviction. So just be aware of what you're listening to. And if you're listening to music and it's causing you to just like go out, want to go out and do those things, 
don't listen to it then that's when you need to find an alternative because at the end of the day like you can't take something out and not put something back in so if you stop listening to that music you need to find an alternative also when it comes to like rap and stuff like I still kind of listen to rap too um but I would say stick to like people that are spitting like wisdom and like straight facts like I would say stick to the J. Coles, the Kendricks, people like that um just because they actually have like something to say in their music um and if you just feel like you have to listen to it I would say listen to the clean version that's my best bet as long as it's not persuading you or getting into your mind and causing you to do things and causing you to think a certain way in which everything does give off a feeling everything does give off a vibe um then you should be good as far as music just be aware of how music affects you that's the best way I can describe it um okay question number two on the list I believe it's going to be question number six but it's question number two for me <laughs> the question uh, I'm gonna skip with that one actually I'm gonna come back to that one uh so the real question number two is what is appropriate and modest clothing for a Christian and why? And this is question number eight on the list. Um, okay, so this one is more geared towards girls just because I've never really, like it's not that common that you hear about guys in modest dressing. Um, it does happen though, because Christianity is being reformed and it's being, People are just being more transparent and being themselves and I'm so here for it. Like normal Christianity does not require you to dress a certain way and look a certain way. So I'm here for it. Um, but I guess, yeah, so it can apply to both. Basically how I define what I should, how I decide what I should wear and what's modest and what's not is if I put it on and I feel uncomfortable in it around anybody period. So if I put it on, and I go around my pastor I feel uncomfortable if I put it on and I go around my mom and I feel uncomfortable if I put it on and I just go out in the public around random people and I feel uncomfortable literally anybody if I put it on and I feel like it's just something that I'm not comfortable in that's when I'm like okay maybe this isn't modest and um also if um I was going somewhere <laughs> I just lost my train of thought Oh, okay, yes, I remember. Okay, yes, I remember. Um, and also, and this kind of goes along with what I was saying before. If you put it on and you feel like God wouldn't be, um, like if God was standing in front of you and he was judging your outfit and he would be okay with it, that so now would be like, okay, you don't need to. So basically, if you feel convicted by the outfit, don't wear it. That's literally the bottom line. I think everybody has a different definition of modesty and what it means to be modest. So you just have to find out what your definition of modest is. But if you put it on and you don't feel comfortable in it, then that's when you do not need to wear it. Um, so yeah, that's about it. And I always try to dress as if God was like standing in front of me himself and telling me like, yo, the outfit not working. So <laughs> that's how I try to gauge um, the whole modesty thing. All right. So question number, what am I on, three? Yeah, question number three, number 11 on the list. Why does God allow trials and temptation to come into our lives? Um, what do you say? What do you say, God? Um, okay, so... This is how I put this into perspective. I look at God as a parent. Um, and parents discipline you because they don't want you to go down the wrong path. Like they want you to live a morally healthy life. They want you to make the right decisions. Um, they want to see you do well. I look at God the same way I look at my earthly parents. God does not want me to go down the wrong path. He wants me to live a good life. He wants me to live according to his will because his will is the best thing for my life. Like I know I'm going to get the most fulfillment and the most joy out of what he has planned for my life. So 
um basically just look at god like that he asks you not to do a lot of things and he's going to test you to see if that's really in your heart if that's really your desire so he's gonna send things to be like is she really for me or not i'm referring to myself when i say she it could be a guy watching this is he or she really for me or not it, you have to be able to discern when he's testing you so you can say no so you can prove basically your loyalty to god or prove your heart to god because at the end of the day there's so much stuff that's living in our hearts that we're not aware of like there's things that you are conscious of and there's things that you're you are unconscious of and you're most of the time you're more there's more things that you're unconscious of living in your heart than the things that you are conscious of. So basically it's God's job to keep revealing those things to you. And how else is he going to reveal those things to you if he doesn't bring trial and trials and temptations into your life? And plus, it also goes back to the old um, cliche saying, but it's so true. How do you have a testimony if you don't have a test? So, yeah. That was question number three. And then question number four is, and it's number 15 on the list, how do I deal with people and problems in my life that have deeply hurt me? Okay, so, and I'm gonna kinda add to this. So basically, how do you deal with separating from friends? I'm gonna add all this in. How do you deal with like separating from friends? How do you deal with people who have um, hurt you, who have deeply hurt you? And I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay, so how do you deal with like separating from friends and stuff like that? So I can only speak from my own personal experiences. So for me, God has a plan for your life. God has his will for your life all set up. And if somebody is not meant to be in your life, they're not going to be in your life. So for me, how I went about it was I lived my normal, regular life, how I would live, how I live as a Christian. And if somebody's not meant to be in your life, you don't have to change. You don't have to say to them hey like this is where i'm going if you want to go with me you can if you don't you don't have to you don't have to say anything like if that person is not meant to be in your life they will leave you like you don't have to set it up and be like hey this is where i'm going if they're not meant to be there they'll find their way away from you so i just wanted to add that into that question just because i know it's hard for people who are just getting into the faith and they still have friends that they feel like aren't necessarily on the same page as them it's super important to surround yourself around people who have the same goal as you who want to live the same way as you who can inspire you so definitely that is that plays a big part in having the right people around you and then the question was how do i deal with people who have deeply hurt me i think how do I deal with people and problems in my life that have deeply hurt me? Um, I would say, first of all, let go. Um, forgive. The biggest thing is forgiveness. Um, the reason forgiveness is so big in the Christian community is because you have to give out what you want to get back. If you want God to forgive you, you have to forgive people. Because at the end of the day, we wrong God every day we do something wrong that hurts God's feelings every day so we can't say that we can't forgive somebody because they did something so bad to us when literally we go around cursing God every single day like unconsciously sometimes most of the time it's unconscious sometimes it is consciously but you do it to God every day so and imagine you doing something like this to your heavenly father every day compared to somebody doing something to hurt you one time like it's like doing something to hurt your heavenly father every day somebody doing something to hurt you one time you have to forgive this person if you want this to be forgiven um so definitely letting go and goes back to the old um cliche saying um unforgiveness is like 
drinking a cup of poison and expecting it to hurt the other person. You're literally hurting yourself because at the end of the day, when you hold unforgiveness in your heart, like that person has control over you. That person, now the unforgiveness that you have for that person is controlling how you think, how you feel, how you act. Like let's say this person is going somewhere and you want to go there and you decide that you're not going to go there because that person is there. Now that person has control over you and your actions and what you're doing. So you want to be free from having unforgiveness in your heart because it literally will like drive all your decisions um unconsciously i want to say that because most of the time a lot of the times we do stuff as humans very unconsciously um we don't realize what we're doing when we're doing it so the biggest thing is to let it go and also when you have god in your life um he's just like a strong backing and a strong support system so it's always good to have that there fall back on like for me there's things that used to hurt me that took me forever to get over. Now there's certain things that come into my life and I'm like, oh, oh that kind of hurt. Oh, well, <laughs> like I just keep going like I know God got me and I know God's standing behind me. So just literally letting it go. And it starts with a change mindset. Like if you change your mind, everything else will change around you. I promise you, like just speak to yourself, speak to your mind and let your mind know like don't let your mind control you you control your mind so you let your mind go how you let your mind know how things are gonna go how you're gonna think how you're gonna act you let your mind know that it starts here and then it'll trickle down to here to your heart so literally start up here change your mindset it'll change everything else around you um and then the last question the question everybody's been waiting for because it's the title of this video it is going to be question eight on the nope 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 line 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 <laughs> it's going to be question six on the list the question you've all been waiting for <laughs> what's dangerous or wrong with being physical before marriage <laughs> so this one is this one is going to be something okay so let's just jump right in so basically, what's the what's wrong with it or what's the dangers behind it? I'll start with the dangers because the dangers pretty much tell you what's wrong with it. Um, okay, so again, like I said before, I think of God as a parent. So if God sets a rule for me, that means I need to follow it because there's something dangerous in it. So, um, and oh yeah, also going back to well, not going back, I didn't say this before, but I'm a firm believer but a believer that if God mentions something in the Bible more than once, like he's serious about it. Like he's real. He's really trying to get you to understand the dangers behind those things. And this thing is mentioned in the Bible multiple times. I don't know how many, but I know that I've read it in multiple places in the Bible. Um, so that definitely plays a big part in it the fact that it's mentioned so much in the bible but there's this thing when it comes to the dangers there's these things excuse me there's these things called soul ties <laughs> now if you've never heard of soul ties soul ties are basically when your soul and somebody else's soul become intertwined so it's like this is your soul soul these let's say these are like chromosomes um and these are somebody else's chromosomes so basically it's gonna it looks like chromosomes but these are this is really your souls okay so they look like chromosomes but this is your soul and this is somebody else's soul when you have sex with them and they're not your spouse well when you have sex with somebody period your souls go like this and they intertwine and they connect with each other so if i had to give like a physical demonstration of what's happening that's what it is um so basically now your souls are combined so basically what that person was carrying like if that person was dealing with depression and you weren't dealing with depression and now you've slept with this person and now you feel like you're dealing with depression that's why because you have now taken on what that person had and now it's yours but also the dangers in that is this person has slept with other people before you when they slept with that person they took on what that person had to 
sorry my camera cut off um but when you okay when they slept with that person they took on what that person had so now you're not only dealing with what that person was dealing with that you slept with you're dealing with what the person that they that they slept with before you now you're taking on their stuff too if i'm making sense so it's like they slept with one person and then they took on their stuff and then they also had their own stuff and now you slept with them so you took on the person before them stuff you took on their stuff and now you got your own stuff that you're dealing with if i'm making sense so basically that's pretty much the dangers in it like i know people who um I hope my brother's okay with me talking about this but he slept with a girl who was atheist and he's he grew up in the church and he slept with her and after that he spent the next three years not believing that god was real not believing in god because of the fact that he slept with her so it's super real. and at the time he wasn't even conscious of soul ties most of the time when you take on that stuff you're not conscious of it and you don't know 100% about the person that you're sleeping with so you have to be careful because you could be taking on stuff that that person has that you didn't even know about and now you've entered it into your body and into your spirit so <coughs> that's the dangers of sleeping with somebody before you're married um <coughs> if you're married you tend to know the person a bit more not to say that marriage just makes you know everything about a person but one it makes it legal in God's eyes because God sent the actual law that we abide by here he sent that law to have order so if it's by law like here then it's by law in his eyes so you're married and you have God's blessing for one because the Bible says it's better to be married and it's better to get married to have sex than to hold on I gotta look it up it's better to get I think rushing the marriage than to burn I don't know why I'm mixing this up because I, I hear about this all the time <laughs> well I don't hear about it all the time but basically and I'll try to put a link um or I'll try to put it in the description basically it's better to get married than to burn so just be careful who you're sleeping with and I know there's those people that say like oh I've been with this person for a long time so I know what they deal with mm, you don't really know a person till you know a person so and then it's it makes it different because once you get married to a person like in God's eyes he's legally connecting you now like it's okay for you guys to have a soul tie because there's good soul ties and bad soul ties so there's like a spiritual transforming in your spirit where you're actually connected to that person because you are one so that's when you truly get to see that person because it's legal in god's eyes for you to see that person for real for real if i'm making any sense at all so like i said you don't know a person until you know a person and once you do get to know that person it can be scary and it can be like whoa i don't want this in my spirit so that's pretty much the dangers in it um yeah <laughs> i hope i answered that in a good way but that was actually the last question so like i said if you have any questions or any comments any concerns um, if you disagree, like I said, respectfully, you could definitely let me know. Like, I'm always here to, I said in being, I'm always here to, like, get feedback and answer questions. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm not going to debate, though. Like, I'm not here for the debating. If you're coming at me and you're like, you're wrong, I'm right, just don't expect for me to answer. But um like i said respectfully disagree whatever you feel like you need to do um and yeah that is it i am gonna be uploading more videos so ask me questions give me something to talk about um god has definitely already given me like multiple ideas to make videos on but give me something to talk about if you got questions ask me questions 
so I can go because I'm going straight to the Father. Like I'm getting these answers from God. So um, ask me questions. I'm here to answer. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll get an upload schedule going. I want to say every Monday, don't quote me on it though. When you put things on the internet, it just makes it so real. So it may have to be every Monday. But definitely watch, keep up, ask me questions. Thank you for taking the time to listen and to watch. Bye.